Right then, ladies and gents, let's talk Mortal Kombat. Greg Russo uh, is discussing... Greg Russo is the writer, FYI. Uh, is discussing trilogy plans and that big character tease. Which, slight spoilers, FYI. Uh, but there was a tease, of course, for Johnny Cage uh, in this film. So we're going to be talking about that today, ladies and gents. Uh, I'll leave this link down below if you do want to check it out. Uh, FYI, link down below as well is my second channel so if you're interested in cars and if you are and i say the nissan pulsar gtir your ears will probably perk up uh, i'm rebuilding one on my second channel so please do go and check it out it's linked down below in the description box subscribe support me over there uh, also we've only got 30 left of my blu-rays so grab it wash can once they're gone they are gone but let's dive into this shall we now this is an interesting turn of events because greg russo had sort of been running his mouth quite a lot uh, before the film was released. It, well, it had basically been released in some markets and then he'd started to talk almost as if he was distancing himself from the film. He was like, oh yeah, Cole Young was a studio-mandated guy. I just thought, well, look, if they're going to say that they need this guy in here, well, I'm just going to try and make it as good as possible. Um, and it, it was fairly evident that he was trying to distance himself from the film. But now he's talking even more about this stuff uh, and seemingly like somewhat positive about it which is interesting i guess you could say uh, but anyway he spoke to collider greg russo uh and he apparently envisaged the story playing out as a trilogy this is the, his sort of not what they've planned specifically but what he as the writer i guess you could say had foresaw now bearing in mind he was given a script to rewrite so he wasn't the original writer of this film. So take all of this with a pinch of salt. Because whatever credit this guy is now trying to take, we can't say that it's always down to him now at this point in time. So he says, movie one. We were always kind of setting this up as, well, I was setting it up. It's basically in my head. I always saw movie one as pre-tournament. Then movie two is hopefully tournament. Then movie three is post-tournament. So the idea was that this was going to be a pre-tournament movie that would hopefully sow the seeds for the tournament, the final. Um, now, I think that's actually going to annoy uh, quite a lot of people, to be perfectly honest, because a lot of people uh, now obviously know that there was no tournament in this film, which is, you know, annoying. Uh, some people were annoyed by this because the trailer actually sold it as it, it was a tournament. Like, a lot of people looked at this and was like, oh, of course the tournament's there. Like, of course it is. Um, I myself really enjoyed this film, FYI, even though it's bad. I still had a really good time with it. But one of the things that does irk me is the fact that there wasn't uh, a tournament in it. Because they could have done that. But I guess they wanted to sort of establish these characters and set up some form of the universe anyway. Now, Russo is hopeful that he will get to work on more Mortal Kombat movies, which is interesting, uh, and introduce some fan-favorite characters that were absent from the first film. Of course, right at the top of that list is Johnny Cage, whose debut is teased in the final shot. Now, a lot of people are boycotting this film because of what the producer said. Not the director, not the writer, but one of the producers said that we don't want to include Johnny Cage because we didn't want him... Basically, they... they I mean, it's a pretty racist statement, but he says, I didn't want to have Johnny Cage in there. Uh, because he's a white guy and it didn't feel right having a white lead uh, or anything like that in you know in a, in such a diverse cast um completely missing the whole point of the fact that kano was one of the most uh, dialogue heavy characters in this film who is a white guy so tone deaf i mean that's just when you know it's virtue signaling bollocks but whatever um but a lot of people have been boycotting the film as a result of it which i would just say actually don't definitely just go and watch it to be fair um because it's not what he made it out to be but anyway uh greg russo piped in on all of that and says johnny's tease at the end the button it changed different ways i remember there were different versions of it that poster was something that the design team did which i love i picked citizen cage because i just thought that was hilarious fight for your rights so i picked that and put it in the script and then they designed an amazing poster and then it had lived in other places, so it actually wasn't the button for a while. It was earlier in the story, like they were walking and you just see it in the background. And we felt like that just wasn't enough, because you wanted to really hit on it. 
Uh, I remember there was a version for the end where they actually went to the lot, so the studio lot. Because um, if you didn't know, the end of the film, uh, Cole Young's character says, I'm going to Hollywood, and then it zooms in on this poster, because obviously Johnny Cage, Hollywood actor. Um, but apparently in another version of the film, they went to a studio lot, uh, a Hollywood lot. So Cole and Sonya went to the studio lot. I forget what it even was. They pulled up and they were going to the meeting. It was going to be shot at Warner Brothers, but it just felt like with the pandemic and everything, it got to a point where it was hard to do a lot of that. I love the way that it buttons and it's simple. And yeah, hopefully we can tell more of those stories. So there you go. Um, a lot of people have then said, obviously, you know, does this mean that Johnny Cage was cast? No, uh, which is why... We actually don't see him in the poster. There is no actual Johnny Cage uh, in this film. But we do know, and this is, again, this is the thing. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, it's so woke, this film. It's definitely not woke. It's calm, calm your tits. Uh, it's not woke at all. Uh, but that that's why, you know, it's why we only see him from the waist down. And interestingly enough, just to kind of cross over, uh, this film's doing pretty damn well, to be honest. I've just released another video uh, interestingly, where we talk about actually the fact that uh, women are giving this higher praise than men uh, at this point in time, which is crazy. You know, I think that's great, to be perfectly honest. I think that's fantastic. Um, but I also think, I, I think why this film is doing so well, um, because I'm sure like a lot of fans don't like it, like I'm sure of that. But I think why this film is doing so well is that it shows that not every R-rated adult-based I guess, I mean, it's not a superhero movie, but you get my point, that sort of movie. It shows that all of these films doesn't have to be dark and dour. You can make it lighthearted. You can make it R-rated and jokey and fun. And I guess that's similarly as to why Deadpool did so well. You know, Deadpool was full of R-rated jokes and humor, and it was just funny. Um, and it shows that these, these sort of R-rated adult films don't have to be dark and sad and crappy. Uh, you know, it, it, to that vein anyway. Now, obviously, is this film perfect? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. But could a sequel happen? Could a trilogy happen? Well, they've actually done pretty damn well at the moment in terms of the box office. Now, a lot of people have been concerned and worried about when this is releasing in the UK. It's rumoured to now be releasing May 17th in the UK, basically, when all the theatres open up here, uh, which is a real big mistake because people in the UK are pissed. They're going to be watching it on Pirate right now. Uh, I myself got a screener, so I was lucky enough to watch it that way. But a lot of people are really annoyed because they announced it was going to release, well, with everyone else. Um, but it hasn't. So everyone's really annoyed by that. And they should not be delaying it any longer. But it has done really well. Uh, and, I, and I think it's going to continue to do pretty damn well. So I think as a result of that, over the next coming weeks, uh, especially as it will open up inevitably or has opened up inevitably in the States, and a lot of people are watching on IMAX, I think it's going to do pretty damn well. And I think then, because the budget is so low, we don't know the actual budget, but it's rumoured to be between 20 to $50 million. That's a tiny budget. Uh, and as that's the rumoured tiny budget, yeah, they'll make some profit on this, uh, and that will then see them want to make more. Uh, and I'm all for seeing them make more, just get Lewis Tan out of it because he sucks and his character sucks. He has literal plot armor as his special power. It's garbage. So let me know what you think down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Thanks so much for watching there, guys. Take care.